Good morning, Pembroke family, both here in Bermuda and around the world. It's great to be back with you praying together. Today is Thursday, the 1st of October. We're going to use a morning prayer in the contemporary version for today's date from the Church of England's app called Daily Prayer that you can find on the Apple iTunes Store or the Google Play Store. Or you can go to churchofengland.org, enter Daily Prayer into the search bar, Click on join us for join us for daily prayer. And if the right service hasn't shown up, then you can always use the show more button and uh, then um, use the drop down menus in the calendar to make sure you're doing contemporary morning prayer on Thursday the 1st. Today is election day in Bermuda, so we'll certainly add, add that to our prayers, won't we? Um, and lots of people um, to pray for in our parish and I'm sure in all of your contexts. So there will be um, plenty of space in, of silence for the Spirit to speak to you if you don't know what to pray and um, for you to, to name aloud or in the silence of your heart all those people and all those things that we need to bring before the Lord. Two readings today. We continue with the story of a divided kingdom in, in Kings, uh, picking up with uh, the story of Elijah, the prophet, miracle worker, thanks to the Lord's presence with him and the Holy Spirit doing, doing extraordinary things. And then we have Paul's farewell address before going off on a ship off to his final days. Let's dig in. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Psalm 56 Have mercy on me, O God, for they trample over me. All day long they assault and oppress me. My adversaries trample over me all the day long. Many are they that make proud war against me. In the day of my fear I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I trust and will not fear, for what can flesh do to me? All day long they wound me with words, their every thought is to do me evil. <clears throat> they stir up trouble, they lie in wait, marking my steps they seek my life. Shall they escape for all their wickedness? In anger, O God, cast the peoples down. You have counted up my groaning, put my tears into your bottle. Are they not written in your book? Then shall my enemies turn back on the day when I call upon you. This I know, for God is on my side. In God, whose word I praise, in the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not fear. What can flesh do to me? To you, O Lord, O God, I will fulfill my vows. To you will I present my offerings of thanks. For you will deliver my soul from death and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Faithful God, your deliverance is nearer than we know. Free us from fear and help us to find courage in your word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 57 Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet. My soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready. O oh God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O oh God, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving, kind, loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O oh God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. Tender God, Gentle protector in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair and give us with all your people 
the song of freedom and the shout of praise in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 63 O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my helper and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand shall hold me fast. But those who seek my soul to destroy it shall go down to the depths of the earth. Let them fall by the edge of the sword and become a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All those who swear by him shall be glad. For the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. To you we come, radiant Lord, the goal of all our desiring, beyond all earthly beauty, gentle protector, strong deliverer. In the night you are our confidence. From first light be our joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 1 Kings 18, beginning at verse 1. After many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year of the drought, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab. I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. The famine was severe in Samaria. Ahab summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of the palace. Now Obadiah revered the Lord greatly. When Jezebel was killing off the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets, hid them fifty to a cave, and provided them with bread and water. Then Ahab said to Obadiah, Go through the lands to all the springs of water and to all the wadis. Perhaps we might find grass to keep the horses and mules alive and not lose some of the animals. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. Ahab went in one direction by himself, and Obadiah went in another direction by himself. As Obadiah was on the way, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognized him, fell on his face, and said, Is it you, my lord Elijah? He answered him, It is I. Go, tell your lord that Elijah is here. And he said, How have I sinned that you would hand your servant over to Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom to which my lord has not sent to seek you. And when they would say, he is not here, he would require an oath of the kingdom or nation as they had not found you. But now you say, Go, tell your Lord that Elijah is here. As soon as I have gone from you, the Spirit of the Lord will carry you, I know not where. So when I come and tell Ahab and he cannot find you, he will kill me, although I, your servant, have revered the Lord from my youth. Has it not been told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a hundred of the Lord's prophets, fifty to a cave, and provided them with bread and water? Yet you now say, Go, tell your Lord that Elijah is here. He will surely kill me. Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? He answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have, and your father's house, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. Now therefore we have all Israel assemble for me at Mount Carmel with the four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal and the four hundred prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent to all the Israelites and assembled the prophets at Mount Carmel. There ends the first reading. Acts 20 is our next one, beginning at verse 17. From Miletus he sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. When they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I have lived among you the entire time, from the first day that I set foot in Asia, 
serving the Lord with all humility and with tears, enduring the trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I did not shrink from doing anything helpful, proclaiming the message to you and teaching you publicly and from house to house as I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus. And now, as a captive to the Spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself, if only I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you, among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom, will ever see my face again. Therefore I declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock, of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own Son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock. Some even from your own group will come distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to warn everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or, or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this I have given you an example, that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus. For he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. There was much weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said, that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. There ends the second lesson. Time for us to pray for the church, for the world, to thank God for his goodness towards us, to confess our faults before him and to ask for his mercy and protection on all our cares and woes. As I said at the beginning, we'll leave lots of space for your prayers. Lord, we ask that you receive this our act of praise and hear our prayer. It's through your grace that we have become your people, one body united through your spirit you have made us your own and we thank you that through your son we are your redeemed people help any every one of us to respond to your love in kind And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your help in making our lives bear witness to your glory throughout the world. We pray for that world, created though it is to be beautiful and good in your, in your purposes, and yet fallen and distorted because of our sin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that your spirit would make us ready to be healing agents. But there's also those who are sick and suffering and grieving and mourning who require miraculous intervention. We ask you to be with them now. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. So once more we give you thanks for all that is good, because that will be a gift given by you. Now, come Holy Spirit and make our voices one with all God's people in heaven and on earth. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant, grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now let's pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and Alleluia. Thanks for joining me, everyone. May you continue to be blessed and to be a blessing to others.